This week I learned that it is possible in 2022 for new Star Wars content to make me be like... Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are headed. We're actually in February now. I'm used to saying we're headed into the next month. We're actually in February now. So the second month of the year, things are just continuing to proceed as foreseen, except for a couple of things I didn't see coming, which we'll get into a little later. But we're going to begin like usual, guys, by talking about what am I reading. I did finish the Nevernight Trilogy with a Dark Dawn. Uh, I think if I rank these books, it would go 2, 1, 3, but I think all three books were solid. There were some decisions he made towards the end of this. They weren't quite what I was hoping for. It really wasn't what I was invested in, but it did not you know, bring the book down at all. But uh, basically what I've said last few weeks, guys, Great series. Uh, I'll be talking about it a little more at length soon. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that it was a, a trip worth taking. And if you're curious about it, uh, you got the seal of approval from me. I'm not saying that my word is gospel, but I'm saying that I would definitely recommend that you check it out. Any age, any gender, any religion, any of those good things, male, female, alien, doesn't matter. I think that you'll have something there that you will enjoy. That, but we did start book two of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, the, uh, the, the read-along that we're doing on the channel here. And uh, it's uh, started off quite well. So I think if you were happy with book one, you're going to kind of like where this one is going. I think I'm about, uh, I don't know, 40% in-ish or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, basically I'm reading about uh, two or three chapters a day and Tad Williams, you know, those are pretty long chapters. Not quite Malazan long. Uh, there's some that are. But, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're these aren't John Gwynn chapters by any stretch. But uh, yeah, I, I like where it's heading. I, I, I think... Every time I think I know where it's going, he, he takes a big sharp turn and it doesn't go that way. So while I'll say that, you know, most traditional fantasy, I feel like you can just kind of look at it and be like, ah, I saw that coming though, you know, but I don't feel like you can with this one. I haven't had one of those moments in a while now, and there's lots of stuff opening up that I didn't expect. So I'm anxious to see where he's going to go with this, if this keeps up the same, uh, uh, I don't want to say a torrid pace because, guys, this is not a book that I'm going to be calling a, a torrid pace like at all. It is still very moderately paced, but uh, as a character first guy, I'm liking that. And I think there's enough uh, world-building stuff that he's doing here that's going to keep everyone very, very interested. So if uh, you haven't started yet, that's okay. There's still time. Join the Discord. You can catch up with us. Like I said, we won't be done until the end of April with these three books. So there's plenty of time for you to catch up. Uh, outside of that, guys, I just kind of continue to work on Beowulf. Uh, that's a... Beowulf, the J.R.R. Tolkien translation that Philip and I are going to be reviewing together on the channel, and uh, I'm just reading a you know a couple hundred lines per night because I think it makes it more easily digestible. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk to Philip about it and and, and feel even more stupid, you know, <laughs> talking about it because uh, he did he does his segment like this, uh, his version of the weekly update called the week that was. And he talked about Beowulf in there and just like that little five minute just ramble on that he does. I mean ramble in a good way, guys. I ramble. I think rambling is great. It's a gift of gab. Uh, that he does about Beowulf in there. I was like, man, I am so far out of my element. But I think it's going to be a fun review. And anytime I get to talk to Philip, it's a good time. But let's move along into what am I going to read, guys. Obviously, I'm going to continue working on Stone of Farewell. I don't necessarily know that I'll finish it, you know, next week. Who knows? Uh, I know when I read a long book like this, it's, uh, it makes this segment rather boring because I'm just going to say the same things again. But, uh, I mean, on paper, I'm hoping to have it finished by next weekly update. And that way I can move and do some of the other things I have planned this month. That is, of course... The other read-along that is happening, there are some that have already started. There are some that are on both read-alongs like me, and they started with Stone of Farewell. So, uh, you know, I won't be alone by the time I do get to it. But I've already said I feel like I'm going to be fine. That's the first time on this read-along that I'm fine if I go, you know, February and March. Because we do do two months for each one of these books. Since I'm not doing the spoiler talks and stuff anymore... I've got plenty of time to, to worry about that. And if that takes a little while, you know, that's fine. That's fine by me. And then I'll be kicking off Abandoned by Blake Crouch. Now, here's the thing, guys. I did get a review copy of his new book coming out called Upgrade. It doesn't come out until July, but I did get a review copy today. People are like, are you going to go ahead and start it? I had already said I was going to read this, and there are other people on the Discord and on the channel have said, sure, I'll jump on and read that with you. So, no, I'm going to be reading this first because to tell you guys, that I would. And I am a man of my word. So we're going to be reading this uh, at the same time. I'm going to kind of be working some Toll the Hound stuff in there. And that's kind of a, really all I've got planned, guys, because 
like I said, I don't imagine that I'll just, you know, be blowing out Stone of Farewell on Tuesday. You know, I, I figure it's going to take me uh, about that while. I feel like that's a series you can't really binge read. You know, I, I don't even think that uh, I've had some people that are doing the audio saying they can't even really binge listen. You know, because there's so much uh, going on in that story. So uh, some stories are just like that, and it's a it's it's a good thing. So uh, I think that would uh, probably take care of everything going on uh, in the next week plus. Let's go ahead and talk about this week on the channel, guys. I did a one of my uh, you know my off the book stuff is is usually pretty hit or miss. Um, you know, I, I know that a lot of people feel like. Uh, you should probably stay in your lane, but you know what? These are something that I. This is something I do just to kind of break the monotony. Show that there are other interests that I have besides books, and I think you know doing one every few months. I think I do what four or five of these a year, uh, so I, I don't have a, I have a problem with that personally. Uh, but I also have no problems with uh, you know people don't want to watch them. But I was rather surprised. I did an off the books for uh, like a, a car review of my new Dodge Challenger, and it is I won't say highly unpopular, but it is highly thumbs down. Uh, I think it's really weird is, you know, I th they hide the thumbs down from you guys now, but, you know, creators, we still see it. And I was just surprised to see the uh, the amount of that. And you can look in and see, I think I lost like a dozen subscribers because of that video. I'll tell you how many people clicked unsubscribe while watching it. And I mean, at first I was like, it's one video, guys, and you don't have to watch it. And I have no idea what it was. Someone brought up maybe it's because uh, it's people that support electric cars and you're talking about your VA. I don't, I don't know what this stuff is, guys. I just... Uh, look, uh, boys growing up in Gen X, guys, uh, the, our, our dreams revolved around those four wheels and an engine, you know, so uh, American muscle cars are something that I'll never be able to let go of, and it's one of my interests, and, you know, it was just something that I wanted to do, so it was never a, a showing off thing, it was never a, 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 this is what you should be doing, it's just, hey, here's a little peek inside my life of what I do outside of books, that's what always off the books is, it's just things that I like. Uh, outside of books and I thought that that was a good change of pace you know taking it out of this room taking it outside showing you guys some other things just trying to do something a little different once in a while so hey you know you win some and you lose some but uh, I feel like the comments have been decently positive you know so uh, who knows off the books will always continue to be very very strange and off the wall and try to be something that isn't quite so predictable so uh, we'll see where that I don't have no plans to stop that anytime soon so I did my review for the week which was a dragon bone chair uh, book one of memory sorrow and thorn and uh, pretty high numbers for uh, for a review on the channel like I said that I've, I've stopped I've cut back on the reviews because they've been the least watched stuff on my channel lately but I think there are a lot of people genuinely curious about the series or they've read it and they're genuinely curious about how I would feel about it. Because there's a lot of people, before I started, that did say the exact phrase of, knowing what I know about you, you won't like it. And uh, apparently you didn't know about me as much as you thought you did. Because I did really, really like the book quite a bit. And uh, that review was uh, very, very positive, I think. And I, I think that uh, there's nothing that I haven't already told you guys, probably one of these weekly updates, that uh, I, I didn't tell you there, except just really getting into some of the specifics about what made it a great time there. But uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy with that review and, and where it went and the feedback off of it. I wrapped up the month of January. A uh, very, very unique month, I think. There was a lot of unexpected things that happened in the month. And uh, uh, I think uh, I, I opened up a new category, which was Flop of the Month, where I talk about my video that's not a weekly update or not off the books, uh, about what video you know, pulled the, the lowest numbers. And I was quite surprised to see it was a Wheel of Time video. So um, I, I don't know if I've, I've burned people out on Wheel of Time or if the series getting such a negative response has kind of killed the, the Wheel of time momentum a little bit out there, you know, maybe. But, uh, you know, sometimes I just look at these things and I say, hey, maybe maybe you just, it wasn't that good. You know, it wasn't that good. Uh, and then I did, uh, I closed off uh, all this week with the uh, classics. I talked about some classics that I want to read, in particular 20 of them, 20 classics that I want to read because uh, I haven't pretend to read everything, guys. And, you know, one of the most popular videos on this channel was me talking about the classic books that I love. And I looked through a lot of those comments. People would be like, oh, I can't believe you didn't put this, this, and this. And I was like, well, I can't put it on my favorite list if I haven't read them, guys. And I started thinking, what's stopping you from reading some of them? You know, some of the bigger ones, you know, like Call of the Wild, like Animal Farm, things like that. Why have you not read these? So I think it was a, a good discussion to have. And, uh, you know, even though... Anytime you talk about classics, it's going to get a little controversial because there are going to be a lot of authors that you really, you know, make some people angry or whatever. But I, I feel like the, the conversation has been extremely positive in that video. I'm very, very happy for that. So that's why I said I, I, I veered away from talking about classics for a long time when I started this channel uh, just because, you know, they were such a hot issue at the time. And I just finally said, you know what? I love classics. I'm not going to pretend that I don't. All I can do is 
continue to talk about the books, you guys. And, uh, you know, I understand that some people have strong opinions about some of these things, but uh, there are lots of authors that, uh, you know, are considered controversial that I want to read these stories and kind of see where their mind was at at that time and seeing what we can learn from it. You know, I, I like to read classics because I like to see what was being written at times where, you know, what some of these people thought were not anything out of the normal. You know, it's, uh, it's just kind of a a character study of when it comes to the author, I think. Uh, when I talked about Edgar Rice Burroughs in there, you know, I know that's an author who really, really, uh, it retroactively does not look like a decent person. So I, I like to kind of dig into this and see, uh, you know, did that come across in the page or did I see they were trying to get a different message across or was did they leave all that behind? You know, that's just why I read classics, you know, because I like to see what that snapshot in time is like. And like I said, it's been a mostly positive conversation, uh, even with uh, some of the, uh, the hot button issue authors that get mentioned a lot in, in modern circles these days. So uh, thank you guys for, for keeping that positive. Let's talk about a little bit of next week plans. I'll probably go ahead and do my book haul. Uh, I think I usually like to try to do it about the second week of the month. So that will be uh, this one because, uh, you know, we kind of started in the middle of the week this this week. So uh, that might be a little earlier than usual, but that's that's fine, right? I, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll be doing my review for the week, which is going to be on the Nevernight Trilogy by Jay Kristoff. I said I'd talk about it a little more later. This is why. Uh, I do want to review that series. Uh, it will be spoiler-free, as always. And it will be mostly talking about the first book, obviously, because I don't want to tell anybody about the twists or turns that come in books two and three. But I've said I feel like it's a series that's been just wholly misrepresented on BookTube uh, by a specific bigger BookTubers than me. And I think a lot of people take their, you know, opinion as gospel. I understand that. Uh, that's what a lot of BookTubers are, are, are there for, is for people to say, okay, well, me and that reviewer have, you know, we align pretty much on the same things. So if they say it's bad, I'm probably just going to consider that maybe it's not for me. Uh, I, I don't know. I always like to try to say, encourage people, you know, hey, I didn't like it, but I'd like it if you try it and see what you think. Or, you know, if you don't like this, this, and this, maybe you won't like it. So maybe you watch that review because I will tell you about some things that might chase you off on the Nevernight Trilogy and some things that might surprise you about how good they really are. So uh, it's a series, like I said, I recommend, and it's going to be mostly positive. But uh, I will tell you about some of those things that may bother you, just like I did when I reviewed his Empire of the Vampire. And uh, I'm looking forward to it because I thought it was a just a really good time and not a very demanding read so um the next one guys i said i've been trying to kind of do these little kind of off the wall segments uh, every month it's kind, of, it's kind of something that people wouldn't expect and this one i've come up with is my favorite animal companions in book or series and this is uh can be comic books this can be fantasy books this can be science fiction books this can be any kind of books at all only thing i'm counting out is movies obviously this is just books but i am counting comic books like i said because there's lots of animal companions out there even in the comics that I would uh, have to put on a list like this. Now, here's the thing, guys. I haven't compiled this list yet. Uh, I know when most people have an idea like this, they're like, okay, well, I've already got this idea. I mean, off the top of my head, I can think about five. I'm sure it'll grow from there once I start thinking about it. I think I'm going to go through every single series on my on my shelves here and be like, does it have an animal in it? Did I love that animal? You know, and, and, and see how that goes. So it'll be a, a good conversation. And then, uh, you know, some people to argue if that's actually an animal companion or not, or, you know, whatever the definition is. But it's, it's something I think it's going to be fun to talk about because um, I do love me an animal companion. And that's one of the quickest ways to get me to break my TBR and Rita series if you tell me it's got the animal companions in it. So I'm always a sucker for that. And this one, guys, I don't know if you know, we got some inclement weather down here in the south right now. Uh, there's a freeze warning going on. Uh, because of what happened in Houston last year, last February, where we actually had snow for the first time since I lived here, like real snow, not like uh, you can make a snowball. No, I mean like real snow. And we had uh, lots of power outages. So everyone, again, this year is, is just assuming that we're going to have power outages. So if we don't have power outages this weekend, the plan is to get together with a few other booktubers and do a spoiler talk for the Dragon Bone Chair. Because I know a lot of people did want me to do a spoiler talk for Dragon Bone Chair. I think I would like to do this more in a conversation, especially since I've got other booktubers that are joining me. On this read along, this is going to be Scott from the Bald Booktuber. Just launched his channel. Uh, list uh, list all these below. Of course, Madison, my my co partner from uh, from the, the As the Wheel Turns, and uh, Jake Bishop, uh, Truthless of YouTube, as some know him. And uh, again, I'll I'll link all these channels below. But I would love to have a conversation with them. So if uh, if my power holds up and we can all get our schedules at the right time, because we all have very different lives, uh, then we will get that video up sometime next week. That is the plan at least before we get too far 
end of Stone a Farewell, I think. And I think that it could be a, a good time because I love talking to other booktubers. It's always a lot of fun to talk to other content creators and see, you know, what they're thinking about it. Let's go ahead and move on to some TV and movie talk, guys. I want to say at first... A couple of, uh, of off-the-wall things here. Uh, the Halo series did have its uh, its, its premiere. Uh, I had a trailer during uh, the AFC Championship game because I think that uh, they decided that the Super Bowl prices were too expensive this year, so they had it there. Uh, my thoughts on the trailer were that it is both it looks both better and it looks better than I expected, and it looks kind of bad. I, I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this is just. Uh, I, after Wheel of Time Season 1, Episode 8, I started looking back and be like, was I being way too easy on it, you know? And with this, now I'm like, oh, great. Now I'm, and now is my like my critical eye like heightened, and I'm looking for something to be wrong. Look, there's some things about it that look cool. I mean, the Covenant look awesome. The, sh- the Covenant ships look kick-ass. Chief looks pretty awesome. There's a couple times where I'm like, okay, that looks so CGI, it looks like I'm playing the video game. You know, but uh, there are some, some things about it that uh, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, first off... Um, I don't like what they're doing with Cortana, and I don't think that any Halo fan has. Now, look, I'm fine. They're going to change the storyline. They don't want to be, they say it's an alternate, it's an Earth 2 situation. It's going to be lots of things recognizable, but it's not going to be following the storyline of the games to a T. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. You want to do your own thing, but, you know, keep the overlying idea of the game together. Cool. I'm fine with that. Do your own thing. I, I don't have a serious, serious problem with that. I've got the games if I want to go do that. You know, they're very cinematic, so uh, that's that's fine. Uh, but the showrunner bouncing, you know, before the first season premieres. And this is already two showrunners that have left. But when you got the one who actually completed this season and they've left before the series even premieres, I won't say that's a red flag, guys. Uh, so, yeah, it has me a little concerned. But, look, I'm going to give it a chance. Uh, my, I showed my kid the trailer. He's very excited. Again, guys, uh, Zelda, Halo, and now Gears of War, his favorite series. So, uh, of course, he's going to want to watch it. And I'm going to watch with him and see uh, how it goes. So, you know. Hope for the best, expect the worst. It's usually the way to go when it comes to adaptation. Uh, speaking of my oldest kid, we did watch a couple of movies this week. Now, look, uh, I've been telling you guys lately, he's getting, he's about to turn 10. So I've got the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going to show him some R-rated movies now because I feel like he's very headstrong. He handles it fine. He doesn't have nightmares. He doesn't go around repeating a bunch of uh, uh, bad words or anything. Not, at least not to me. I mean, I don't pretend that he's not doing it with his friends. But I said, you know what? Mom's not here. Let's misbehave. Let's eat some junk food. Let's order a pizza. And let's watch the Terminator duology. Because, yes, guys, I did lead him to believe that there are only two Terminator movies. So we watched the first movie. He liked it. He thought, eh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's the first time I've ever seen Arnold you know, be a bad guy. You know, Because we watch a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies now. And he, he, I don't know how he felt about that. Arnold being the bad guy, he wasn't really ready for it. Then we watched Terminator 2. And, guys... He loved it. He said it might be the best movie he's ever seen. He cried at the end. Uh, he's been quoting it all week. Uh, he absolutely loved it. And here's what I'm here to tell you guys. That movie has aged better than a fine wine. It is incredible. It was the first time I watched it on 4K because I just got a 4K TV earlier this year. So, uh, yeah, it's it's gorgeous and it's amazing. It's I think that movie and Jurassic Park, which came around like similar times, it's weird how those two movies, when the special effects were still being learned, look better than a lot of movies today. It's incredible, right? But yeah, Terminator 2, what a movie, man. It is still just so, so good. And uh, I can't think of anything wrong with that movie. That would definitely be one of my top 10 movies of all time. It's just that good. And it's aged incredibly, guys. I can't believe it's 30 years old already. It's just, it's it's so good. If you haven't watched that, man, I mean, I don't know what you're doing here. Get 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 right with your life and watch Terminator and Terminator 2. So I was like, Terminator? Good. Terminator 2? Freaking great. And I love that I passed that on to my kid now, and he feels the same way about it as I do. He really did love it. So, uh, uh, yeah, nothing but great things to say about that. So I want to talk about Star Wars Book of Boba Fett here, guys. Now, look, I'm I'm going to try to be as spoiler-free as possible here, because if you haven't seen Season 1, Episode 6 of Book of Boba Fett, I want you to see it. I want you to try to be surprised if you've avoided the internet completely. Maybe you've been surprised. Um, that was probably the most my face has hurt from smiling watching anything Star Wars related since Return of the Jedi. And that's not hyperbole, guys. It was absolutely amazing. Some of the things on there were stuff that I just had accepted after the sequel trilogy we were never going to get to see. And it was just so good. As an EU honk, there was stuff in there that I never thought I'd see. And I mean, every 
couple of seconds. I'm like, there's an Easter egg there, Easter egg there, Easter egg there. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, this 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 nostalgia. It's it's a problem. It's kind of nostalgia done right, though, in that way, like the new Spider-Man movie did, where it didn't take away from your new characters. Because, look, they have legacy characters and stuff showing up on here, but, you know, the relationship between the Mandalorian and and, and Grogu still is, like, one of the best parts of the show, you know? And, and that's something I'll get back to. I know I'm talking about Book of Boba Fett here, and you're like, why are you talking about Mando? I'll talk about that as well, because that is the criticism I have. But, guys, it was so much in that episode that... You know, it's all this original old guard fans wanted to see with the sequel trilogy, and we got it. And I just I gotta thank Dave Filoni, obviously, who I think is a genius, and John Favreau. And uh, look, when I thought it couldn't get even better, then a character from the Clone Wars shows up at the end. One of my favorite, favorite characters from the Clone Wars. I mean, that's that's why I have this. You know, uh, it's a character I absolutely love. I used to say that I thought he was better than Boba Fett. You know, so it's uh, it was just such a cool moment. To get on there, and then you got uh, uh, Timothy Oliphant, who's basically playing the same character that he plays on Justified Deadwood. <laughs> it's just so good, guys. It was just such an amazing episode. I've always said I feel like Star Wars is the best when it tries to be a western, and that episode literally had things that were ripped straight out of like Sergio Leone's like Man with No Name trilogy. Just so good, so good, just so well done. And yeah, the nostalgia was great, but it was everything about it was amazing, guys. It just really, really was. Now here is the critical parts of it. This is the book of Boba Fett, and Boba Fett has had no lines for two episodes. He's had one appearance and no lines for two episodes. And this one, I think all he did was raise his eyebrow and look this way one time. That That is kind of concerning. Now, here's what I feel like. Now, I don't know how far they shot this show in advance or anything like that. And this is just complete conjecture on my part. I don't know how this would. Know what this feels like. This feels like Filoni and Favreau saw what they were doing with the show and said, we need a soft reboot. Because the last two episodes have not felt like the same show at all. And you know what? They've been the most well-received episodes, I think, even over The Mandalorian at this point. These have been, like, since Disney has come back with Star Wars, this has been, like, the two most positive things I think that they put out the last two weeks. And guys, it isn't just nostalgia. It's just really, really good Star Wars. And that's just something that some of us had given up, thought we were never going to see again. But uh, yeah, it's concerning. It's a real red flag when you got the star of your show feeling like an afterthought. And I think that that problem with that is, this is why I said I didn't want them to make a Boba Fett series. Because what made Boba Fett so cool? He was just a silent badass off in the corner that when he would show up, do some awesome things, and you didn't have to know too much about him. This is like, okay, this is kind of proving my point. Now, I know they want to make a complete shared universe. That's why you see Ahsoka. That's why you see all these shows kind of crossing over. Some of these shows are getting their own thing. I think they want to have a complete you know, universe on Disney+, Plus, which I understand. Why wouldn't you want to do that? And they want to have these characters cross over to each other's shows. I look at this like when Angel spun off of Buffy. And in that first season, they were like, oh, oh, they got to have Buffy on here because they got to give, uh, you know, they got to validate, give, they got to make this feel like a legit show because it spun off of Buffy. And you know what? It worked. Buffy came on the show. Angel got some of the highest ratings it ever got. And then people said, I'm going to stick around and watch more. It's not just a, you know, a crummy spinoff. And I feel like that's what they're trying to do here. Okay, this show's not doing as good as the show that it spun off of. Let's bring that main character over here, gets people's attention and show, you know what? These characters can show up at any point. You know, you could be watching Ahsoka one week and oh god, Thrawn's on here. You could be watching Mandalorian one week and Luke Skywalker shows up. You know, it's just it's just it's one of those things it's like you've got to watch them all now because they can all cross over with each other. And I think it's a great plan. It really is. I mean I think Marvel proved it's a great plan if it's executed right. And I feel like if you got Favreau and Filoni as your architects it's probably going to be done right. So, guys, I couldn't be happier right now. Yeah, sure. I wish that they weren't doing what they're doing with Boba Fett. I want to feel like they're going to figure it out and they'll correct it along the way. But, uh, yeah, that is easily, without a doubt, that one episode this week was better than anything that the sequel trilogy has done. It's better than anything they've done since they've gotten the IP from George Lucas. It is the best non-George Lucas Star Wars that we've ever gotten. And... It just, it, I mean, like I said, guys, my face was hurting from smiling because I loved what I saw so much. It was just gorgeous and so well done, and uh, I, I, I appreciate it. As an Old Guard fan, I am extremely, extremely happy. So, uh, guys, yeah, I hope that you will watch it if you haven't yet. Uh, before I go, real quick, there is a gaming talk thing. i got to mention that Sony did acquire Bungie. Now, look, guys, I don't play Destiny. 
Uh, I figure that's why they did this, because they want uh, exclusivity to Destiny. It's kind of up in the air, but people are saying, I, I just, I've heard conflicting reports uh, where Sony is saying that it's still going to be multi-platform. Uh, I've heard others saying they're going to make it exclusive. Uh, for me, guys, look, I, you knew this was going to happen. After Mark Microsoft started acquiring uh, other, other properties, other, other studios, you knew that Sony wasn't just going to sit back and, and do nothing. They were going to strike back a little bit. I don't necessarily know how big this move is because, like I said, I don't play Destiny. I don't know how big Destiny really is. Uh, you know, it's not like they bought Minecraft or something. But I, I, it's enough name recognition alone to say, okay, this is a big move for them. So I, I felt like they needed to do uh, something. But I feel like this is kind of like the Monday Night War. Do you remember uh, when WCW and w, when it was still WWF were having like the Monday Night War and they were like on head to head and they were competing and it was like, okay, they were getting this guy that was on WCW last week. Now he's on WWF and this guy that got fired from WWF, he's on WCW this week. No, Rick Rude even showed up on both shows on the same night, you know? So uh, I, it's what it feels like to me, you know? It feels like it's really going to be that thing where we're just, okay, we're going really head to head. Meanwhile, Nintendo's just kind of you know sitting back and being like, "Hey, here's this new game with Kirby fishing," you know, because that's what Nintendo does, guys. They don't they don't care what the others are doing, and that's what makes Nintendo great, right? But hey, good for Sony for not uh, sitting on their laurels. But for me, guys, uh, there is a big first party release coming out for Sony in a couple of weeks here in the new Horizon Zero Dawn series. So I'm excited the most about that. All this other stuff, ah. It's just noise, but I did want to kind of bring it up because uh, I, I think it's you're going to see a lot more of this. This isn't done by a long shot. You're going to see some crazy acquisitions in the next year plus. And personally, I can't wait to see what happens. So guys, that was my week. A little long-winded because I was so excited to talk about Star Wars. I mean, that's the universe I've spent the most time of my life in. So of course, I had a lot to say, and I could say a lot more in spoilers. But uh, I, I don't think that uh, I don't think I had the audience for Star Wars spoiler talk. But uh, guys, I'd love to talk to you. Drop on the Discord, and I'll talk to you about it there if you want. Or uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe after the season's over, me and Rockio can get together and we can do a, a Book of Boba Fett uh, spoiler talk video or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens, guys. You let me know if you are interested in something like that, and uh, let me know what you've been up to this week, what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you are playing, and how. Have yourselves an awesome and safe weekend.